Welcome everyone to the phase one monthly webinar series. This particular webinar is a special webinar. It's joint with Regal. In addition, an end user of both Regal and phase one, Quantum Spatial, a NP5 company will be presenting as well. We welcome questions. Please use the chat function to submit your questions and we'll answer those at the end of the webinar. There are also handouts available for download for this webinar. So feel free to download them where you can, or you can go to our respective websites to access them and additional information there as well. My name is Dana Brown. I will be presenting today for phase one. Mr. Michael Sitar will be presenting for Regal. And saving the best for last will be Mr. Ryan Lynch from Quantum Spatial. But before we get started, there are three polling questions. Please oblige us by responding to these three questions. As manufacturers, it's important that we understand the market direction for our roadmaps of future products. So the first question, what are your typical imagery deliverables for your LiDAR collections? Geotiffs, orthophotos, or orthomosaics? About half of you have already voted. Orthomosaic seems to be the leader in this group. It's a nice diverse group because there's a good percentage of all three. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and uh, we'll share with you what those results are. And now we'll go to the next question. How often do you include imagery collection with your LiDAR collection? Some of the time, most of the time, all of the time, or never? Dana, the poll hasn't come up <clears throat> on the screen. Thank there you for that. Here Thank we go. You. Thanks. Looks like imagery collection is very common for LIDAR as a common deliverable. We have over half of you voted. About three quarters of the way there. Thank you so much for your quick response time. Okay, let's take a look and share those results. So it's very common to share imagery with the or co-collect with the lighter. 
So let's go to the final question. What applications does your business predominantly focus on? Wide area mapping, urban mapping, corridor mapping, or small area mapping? This question is, is key to us as well because as manufacturers that offer products for each one of these particular use cases helps us understand where to uh, bring more products into that particular area. Great, fast response on that as well. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. White area mapping seems to be a big one and small area mapping coming up behind that one. We can see that. Great. Well, thank you very much for uh, sharing your feedback on those three polls. Your participation is very appreciated. So let's go to the next slide and see the uh, overview of the presentation of what the information that we will be covering. From a phase one perspective, I'm going to do the corporate overview, the phase one products overview, medium format, the different IXM and IXMRS options, our 280 megapixel, and our four band. So from the corporate, it's from Regal, it'll be sensor options, integration, field of view selection, calibration and oversight, operations and processing. The third presentation or part of this, this webinar will be for quantum spatial, which is really the key of the integration of both sensors together. They're gonna to discuss their class system and specific project examples from that class system when it comes to the the products being integrated and some of the accuracy results that they get from them as well. So let's talk a little bit about phase one. So for some of you that have been on these webinars before, uh, this information may be covered previously. For others, this may be new to you. So phase one is typically synonymous with medium format, and we'll talk about medium format here in a minute. Um, but uh, as just a camera company in its beginning, it's now a an imaging solutions company, so providing uh, solutions that are fo that are specific for certain industries and continuing to grow. We have a dream team across the world uh, in different locations. We have R and D centers for the camera technology itself in Copenhagen, the industrialization of those that camera technology in Israel, and then the optics part of it would be from the uh, the Japan uh, location as well. So with that and our sense and support offices covering the globe, as well as many distribution and service partners. One of our core strength is course on the integration side, which is why we have this joint webinar with Regal uh, as they've integrated our products as well. So a little history of phase one, founded in 93 for professional photographers. Uh, in 2012, uh, the industrial portion started with the aerial side of things, and just recently, the ground side as well. So we have a ground business unit uh, that uh, can also solve problems from the ground as opposed to an aerial platform. And that's something that on this side, I wanted to make aware of those who are in attendance. Um, if you see yourself as more of an enterprise account, please reach out to phase one if you want to standardize on cameras on aerial platforms, ground platform, uh, and or for marketing on the professional photography side. From the aerial group specifically, we have a number of camera and lenses and complete systems. So whether you're an integrator that would like to take our image system and integrate it into your platform, um, we welcome those conversations. Or if you're an end user that just wants a turnkey solution, uh, we have complete systems as well. And our strength, of course, is in our integrating partners that take our cameras, integrate it into their payloads to offer a complete solution. As you'll see through this presentation, and maybe already, is that there's just not one camera, one size fits all. From a 50 megapixel 
for low flying mapping on a UAS or UAV to high flying wide area coverage with a 280 megapixel camera and those in between. Medium format. I like using this illustration because it really gives a perspective of you know, the sensors that phase one is standardized uh, within the cameras compared to the other cameras on the market today. What does this mean? It means that I have a larger footprint of coverage per frame, that, which means fewer images, fewer flight lines, and an increase, increased capacity. So I can get more jobs done with the same equipment using phase one compared to uh, another type of imager. Our core product is the IXM series, the IXM and the IXM RS. And we'll talk about the differentiation between the two. The IXM is a UAS, UAV, or even low flying altitude uh, camera for, for aerial acquisition, whether it's inspections and or mapping. It is a little lighter in weight and is IP53. Whereas the IXMRS is for your fixed wing aircraft that's flying at higher altitudes, uh, typically for mapping. Although there are some with oblique set up, setups, which you'll see later on this particular presentation. Now, introduced to the IXM series and the IXMRS, we do have specific models that have backside illuminated sensors. Why is that? Well, if you look to the far left, 3.76 mic micrometers is the size of the pixel. Um, when you have it that small, it needs to get light to it in order to have a good quality image. Well, by having a backside illuminated sensor, it gets light to that photodiode. What does that mean? Well, that means that now I have a still supported wide dynamic range that I could still see in shadows, which would be the key part of why you want that wide dynamic range when you're captured from the air. Another nice benefit that comes from the phase one CMOS sensors in the IXM series is the forward motion compensation. We call it blur control technique. Because of the fast shutter speeds and the wide dynamic range, it mitigates or minimizes any blur in your acquisition. How much so? Well, if you look at this particular slide, you can see based on the exposure time and the speed of travel before you would experience some blur. Now, this is assumed on a GSD of five centimeters that I could fly as much as 243 knots and only have one pixel motion blur. Typically, you don't see motion blur until up to three pixels. So even at 486 knots, <laughs> you can capture with a two pixel blur at one over 2,500, just to give you some perspective. And this isn't just forward motion, um, it's all axis of travel. Now, moving on to the IXMRS series. There's two cameras within this uh, series. It's the 150 of the 150 megapixel and the 100 megapixel. As you might imagine, the 150 megapixel is the most common, but there are use cases and applications for the 100 as well. So you have a, a 14,000 pixel cross track with the 150 megapixel. Please don't let the amount of lenses that are available to confuse you. That's why you have phase one uh, sales managers to discuss or integrators to talk about what the use case or application is and we can uh, assign or configure a specific setup with the right lens with the right camera for your use case or multiple use cases we offer anywhere from 32 millimeters to 300 millimeter lenses just a quick snapshot of uh, a full extent of 150 megapixel image of an intersection and then a zoomed in area as well Now, to the UAS or UAV or low flying altitude uh, cameras, the IXM100 and the IXM50, the 100 being the 100 megapixel and the 50 respectively. When we first released the series, 
the 50 megapixel was by far the, the unit of choice. Um, that's because at Nader, mapping with the UAS under 400 feet gave well enough, well more than enough resolution uh, for a deliverable. But when you put it in oblique and you start doing inspections, the 100 megapixel was the unit of choice. And as of the last 18 months, 10 to 1 on the camera ratios from 100 megapixel versus 50. We also find from a ground standpoint that the 50 megapixel is the ideal camera for ground mobile mapping use case applications. Now with the IXM series, we have integrated directly into one specific platform uh, for UAS or UAV. There are integration kits, so if you have a platform and you'd like to know if there's support for that, feel free to call phase one, contact us through our website, and we can certainly um, put you in contact with the, the right integrator for that if it needs to be integrated. Our recent release this year is the, I, the IXMRS 280 megapixel camera. It has a 20,000 pixel cross track and is offered both in RGB and in four band uh, uh, deliverables. Now the 280 megapixel looks like two cameras pushed together. It's just a little bit more complex than that. Within each one of those uh, camera bodies that you see there that's fused together, the image sensor is offset from the optics. And by doing so, the camera can look down nadir and still have um, that 20,000 pixel cross track uh, from, from both images. What's becoming more common or standard with their shipping with a lot of the uh, the Regal payloads, uh, specifically the 1560, is the four band system. Being able to capture both uh, the RGB and the near infrared, thus doing uh, helping analysis for vegetation management. So as my last slide, just as a kind of a summary, Regardless of your application in the air with what, whatever platform you have or payload requirements, phase one probably has the right combination of camera and lens for that use case from 50 megapixel to 280. I want to thank you for listening to this portion of it. I'm going to trans transfer over or transition to Mr. Mike Sitar now so that he can now um, also share the Regal USA site. Hi all, just while we're waiting to change those screens, I just wanted to say as a quick reminder, if anyone does want to ask a question, they can just type it into the Q&A box in your GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll review all the questions at the end of the webinar. So, Mike's screen's ready now, so I'll hand back. Thanks. Thanks, Paula and Dana. Um, so for the second portion of this presentation, we'll discuss the uh, sensor options that are offered by Regal and of course uh, the camera solutions that are embedded within them. We'll focus a little bit on the integration aspects, talk briefly about FOV selection, um, some of the calibration and boresight procedures, and then we'll end the presentation uh, for our component uh, on some of the operations and, and processing workflows associated with it. Uh, following my component, then uh, Ryan will finish up with uh, the practical application of these sensors in a real-world environment. For imaging options, Phase 1 is a preferred supplier to Regal for our airborne camera solutions. And based on their product portfolio, to address various market vertical needs for resolution and coverage, we integrate the following sensors. For corridor or low-altitude applications, the IXM100 is a smaller and lighter version of the IXM RS cameras that Dana just spoke about. And this is ideal for our unmanned and pod configurations where size and weight are critical. For altitude or higher altitude applications where area coverage efficiency dominates, we recommend the larger footprint of the IXM RS cameras and their highest quality lens options. Both camera models are available with either an achromatic or RGB chip, as Dana mentioned earlier, or the cameras are paired and co-collected if four-band imagery is desired. 
Regal is a leading manufacturer of high precision airborne LiDAR sensors for tight tolerance survey applications. And we offer a number of different sensor models depending on your platform and application requirements. These include our VUX240, a lightweight high density sensor for unmanned and smaller platform installations. This sensor is an excellent option when used as a core sensor for multi-camera configurations requiring two or more cameras or when installation constraints prevail. Our VQ480 and 580 Mark II are slightly larger sensors with increased range performance. These sensors are small enough to fit inside a gyro stabilized mount and still accommodate the addition of peripheral cameras. Our VQ1560 Mark II is our flagship product that is just as capable of delivering on high density core app corridor applications, but from a fast moving platform to high altitude surveys for our statewide collection programs. A couple additional details about our VUX240. This lightweight sensor incorporates a downlook scan configuration, uh, and this produces three scan lines per single revolution of the scanner for uh, incredible 400 lines per second at the full 75 degree field of view. When combined with its high sampling rate, extremely low smooth surface repeatability and equidistant point distribution, end users can expect exceptional data quality across the entire FOV. It's an ideal choice for integrators looking for a LiDAR core for their custom sensor integration needs, or as an off-the-shelf solution with FAA-approved helipods, high-accuracy position and orientation system, flight management system, and of course, phase one cameras. The VQ480-580 sensors go to the next level by adding increased range performance, but still in a lightweight and compact design. Available in either 1550 or 1064 nanometer wavelengths, the 480-580 sensors are an excellent entry-level sensor that is extremely versatile for corridor and or small area collections. Its unique form factor with shaved sides allows for a drop-in fitment to a GSM and the addition of two strap-on cameras for co-collection of four-band imagery. Similar to the VUX240, it includes a 75-degree field of view with matrix scan pattern with maximum point density in the interior of the scan, really where it matters the most. The 1560 Mark II is the Mercedes of wide area mapping sensors and is a full system solution with fully embedded camera options. It's the only dual laser sensor on the market in a single sensor design. Its unique scan pattern and simultaneous double pass all but guarantees an occlusion free data set in urban mapping environments and forestry applications. This is enabled by both its nadir look angle and counter rotate and pitch scan geometry. More recently imitated but never duplicated, it produces a homogeneous point cloud across the entire swath extent. While available as LiDAR only configurations, many clients are looking for off the shelf LiDAR and imagery solutions for simultaneous co collection that can be bolted directly onto their platform of choice. Our VP1 is a perfect example of a corridor LiDAR and imaging solution that can be bolted to a multitude of helicopter platforms. And these can include the Bell 206, 407, 429, the AS350, 355, and H125, the MD369, 500, 600 helicopters, and even Robinson R44s and R66. It's available as a field install with required FAA certification, and it can be rapidly installed and dismounted. As mentioned previously, the VQ480-580 Mark II sensors are designed to be dropped inside a GSM with complete utilization of the entire 75 degree field of view. Add a pair of RGB NIR cameras on either side and you have an active passive imaging solution that is independent of the effects of platform dynamics for crisp and aligned imagery and elimination of scan line phasing and resultant density variation due to pitch. This strap-on peripheral sensor compatibility and GSM fitment provides a great deal of flexibility and scalability for various platform options. The VQ1560 Mark II is only available as a total solution with high accuracy INS, FMS, and has two embedded and protected camera ports with your choice of RGB and or achromatic cameras for four band image collection. The cameras are easily accessible for maintenance and or lens swap options and the entire system drops into a GSM, resulting in the ideal survey mapping configuration for best available data quality. 
coupled with inherent and robust calibration stability, the sensor con configuration provides exceptional data consistency independent of parameter selection. Here are some platform inst installation examples for all three sensor solutions. The first is our VP1 attached to the nose mount of a Bell 206. The provided dovetail mounting system enables a rapid install and disconnect to allow portability of the solution to other platforms. Both the LiDAR and cameras are installed within the carbon fiber pod and vibration dampened. The second example is our VQ480 or 580 Mark II sensor installed in a fixed mount on a Cessna 206. In this case, there is no camera installed, but the sensor design enables fitment between the seat rails, avoiding modifications to the airframe. And finally, the third example was our VQ1560 Mark II gyro stabilized and installed in one of Quantum Spatial's aircraft. Cameras are installed in the lower nose cone to eliminate FOV obstruction issues that might arise in a flush mount configuration. While well, off-the-shelf solutions are desired by many, Regal's Vux LiDAR sensors are endeared by clients and integrators for their compact size, data quality, and extensive scalability with peripheral imaging sensors. This allows for some interesting orientation geometries to be considered for various application verticals to maximize the data quality and coverage provided. This is, a, is an example of what con, Quantum Spatial has done with a pair of Vux240 sensors and various phase one cameras for their power line collection program. And Ryan will go into more detail in this specific configuration shortly. A closer look at the mounting of a phase one camera inside the nose cone of the 1560 reveals that the camera is rigidly mounted to the optical chassis to ensure maximum accuracy and reliable alignment to the IMU and laser system when using a direct georeferencing solution for image map production. The camera is also easily accessible via the removable cover that includes an optical glass window for sensor protection and distortion-free image collection. This enables field removal without jeopardizing the internal optical alignment of the laser subsystem. Nitrogen purging is then used following reassembly to effectively displace moisture and oxygen and create a more stable climate within the sensor body. A desiccant cartridge is included as further protection from high humidity environments. All our sensors are equipped with removable spare desiccant cartridges. When it comes to FOV selection, there are two primary considerations. The first is the, the expected flight altitudes as a function of application requirements for point density, GSD, and platform choice. And the second is footprint matching as a function of LiDAR sensor selection and their lateral FOV extent, or swath widths. Generally speaking, the lower altitude collections have smaller GSD requirements and higher point density requirements. To maintain the desired coverages, shorter focal lengths are recommended that provide maximum right-of-way widths whilst maintaining GSD objectives. With pixel resolutions before, below four microns for the 150 megapixel cameras, this is as much more easily achievable at higher altitudes than it has been in the past. So much so that now we're starting to see many of our clients starting to repurpose their wide area LiDAR sensors for corridor work. The high point density and small GSD requirements are now easily achievable from faster moving aircraft for higher productivity. However, for detailed inspection work, the lower altitude sensors on small manned or unmanned platforms are still the configuration of choice where resolution is critical. For small to wide area collections and urban mapping initiatives, Longer focal lengths are used to gain resolution from altitude as well as reduce building lean when creating digital twins for high redundancy or stereoscopic collection. For wide area, the image footprint of the camera can often be matched to the LiDAR FOV precisely and still achieve required GSD for maximum collection efficiency. No longer is the flight plan constrained by the camera GSD requirements and image footprint differences relative to the LiDAR swath width. With a fixed FOV sensor design, the image and LiDAR footprints are generally coincident with each other throughout the collection. Lab-derived calibration parameters are available from phase one and are generally acceptable for our lower altitude solutions. However, since it is necessary to also determine IMU misalignment angles following sensor installation for direct georeferencing accuracy and in air calibrations perform to further refine the values at altitude and Regal provides a refined calibration and boresight report for each camera installed. 
To do so requires a flight regime that allows us to fully characterize the interior geometry. This is best done at varying altitudes in opposing directions. The calibration area includes known ground control and checkpoints to evaluate the bundle block and calibration success via RMS residuals analysis. The control site is divided into nine quad quadrants with five GCPs identified and measured within each quadrant corner and center. A picture of the GCP target from three different perspectives is captured included in the GCP report for subsequent verification of the auto GCP identification procedure. The resultant calibration and bore site values are then formatted for ingest into the RioQuire operation software prior to flight. Operational use of the various mapping solutions requires a flight management system that includes mission planning, navigation, sensor control, and monitoring. We offer clients a choice of mission planning and navigation options, including a Planix's pause track solution and TopoFlight. Both packages have become industry standards, and Phase One has more recently started offering their own variant of TopoFlight called IX Flight. What is common to both is the ability to simultaneously plan for both LIDAR and imagery co collection to ensure all project requirements are met. Flight plans are then passed to the in air navigation system for automated or operator assisted execution. Sensor control monitoring is done using RIA Acquire and Phase One's IX capture software. Image histograms are displayed as well as image footprints and LIDAR swath coverages. Sensor subsystems are monitored and flight logs automatically generated. Following collection, the raw data is downloaded and processed into image geotiffs and LAS point clouds for subsequent ingest into third-party value-added applications. Regal's RIE process LIDAR and imagery processing platform is used for this. It includes all the necessary wizards, visualization engines, alignment tools, and accuracy reports to facilitate rapid processing and validation. For a more detailed look at the practical implementation of Regal and Phase One sensors in their combined data products, I'll pass the presentation to our co-presenter, Mr. Ryan Lynch of Quantum Spatial and NV5 Company. As Dana mentioned at the beginning of our presentation, Ryan is Quantum's Airborne Operations Manager and he has a long history of sensor integration, operational deployment, and project management at Quantum. His upcoming examples will showcase Quantum's custom sensor solution, the class system, and feature benefits to the corridor mapping segment as applies to power line mapping. Thanks, Mike. Uh, just while we're waiting to view Ryan's screen, uh, just also wanted to confirm to everybody that the recording will be available on our website in the next few days, along with all the previous webinars that uh, phase one of them. So on to Ryan, thank you. Okay, thanks Paula, and thanks for the introduction, Mike. And uh, just wanted to first off thank uh, Mike and Dana and Paula for asking me to be a part of today. And um, again, my name is Ryan Lynch and I manage uh, data acquisition operations for uh, our commercial vertical at Quantum Spatial. And today I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit about some of our customer requirements and needs and some of the various things uh, we've put together with the help of Regal and Phase One to help meet those needs. Um, so this is a, a quick uh, look at our what we call our class system. Uh, class stands for uh, Comprehensive Low Altitude Sensor Solution. And really, when we talk about class system, we're really kind of starting off with uh, customer needs and requirements. How we were able to configure this particular system um, really was derived around those design requirements fitting to the customer end goals. And so I've got a few listed over to the right here. Uh, predominantly, this system was, was thought of or built as a single deployment solution is what we initially called it. And really, it was for uh, primarily corridor applications, but we also didn't want to stop there. We wanted to look at other uh, uh, particular customer needs that were outside that, that sphere as well. And so we were able to do that and come up with a, a system that we felt met all those, all those requirements. So. Um, when you look at the upper right hand part of the screen, you'll see our first iteration class system um, as detailed in the rear of the pod with uh, two VUX 1LR systems. Uh, one of those LRs actually also has the embedded APX20 IMU. So uh, if needed, it can be quickly removed and installed on a UAS platform. 
Uh, also in the pod, we have configured a IXM RS series uh, four band Nader camera looking down. And then in the front, we have the IXM 100F series oblique camera. And this is all paired with an Aplanix uh, Pause 610 system. Um, and earlier this year, uh, we're kind of proud to announce and deploy our second iteration class system, uh, very similar to the first. Uh, however, we have upgraded uh, to two uh, Fux 240 LiDAR scanners uh, in this particular configuration. We've also upgraded uh, the forward-looking oblique and rear-looking oblique cameras to the 150 megapixel uh, cameras from phase one. In addition, it also has the Aplanix 610 system and also the uh, phase one four-band uh, Nader system as well. And so, um, looking at just a few examples of this system. So um, quickly, um, you know, the system was built and deployed uh, this year, which was a bit of a challenge, as everyone is, is aware of the different challenges we've all faced this year in this industry. Uh, but I'm happy to say that this, uh, this particular uh, sensor has been out and deployed now since uh, late April, and just been finished up a large job here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so we're happy to have this in our quiver as well. Um, so on to the practical side of my presentation, which um, really had to do with a large program uh, that Quantum Spatial was a part of last year, uh, specifically for a transmission vegetation management program. This particular program uh, was over 15,000 miles. It was collected uh, in early fall of last year, over about three months. Um, so uh, effectively what we had to do was deploy multiple systems from multiple platforms uh, to meet the customer timeline and requirements, uh, which we were happy happy to meet that challenge. Uh, so in the upper right hand screen, and just have a quick rundown of of what we what we used. Um, so essentially, we had from a fixed wing platform three uh, different fixed wing that were carrying the 1560i from Regal, and then we had two separate helicopters. Uh, each one of those helicopters had a dual Vux 1LR system along with Phase One accoutrements to collect oblique imagery. So uh, when I was thinking about how to go about kind of displaying some of this data so it made more of an impact in, in really the goal of this webinar, which was integrated data products, um, uh, the perfect kind of example is what we're calling our, our Insight platform. Um, Insight is, is essentially a web service and mobile application that we can deliver data to our clients. Um, and it also works great just as a showcase tool for this webinar. Um, there's a lot of information. Uh, I'm not going to cover hardly any of it. I'll go through quickly, uh, walk through the program to show you guys some data. Um, but if you need more information, um, there's some information here. The website on I'm inside at quantumspatial.com. You can reach out. Matt Nugent and his team at Quantum have done an amazing job. I'm still very impressed uh, with this system, uh, Insight. So they can they can get you guys uh, any information you might want. So I'll talk through this. Uh, this is essentially uh, your kind of welcome screen or I have it set up to a particular extent. So here we're looking at a transmission corridor and what you'll notice is you can kind of start to see some Nader imagery. And what you have on the right, you have some widgets here, which I'll go over and kind of show real, real quickly. Uh, you have kind of a drop down upper menu that's kind of show you different layers that you have access to. Again, this particular uh, insight is built around this particular project and customer requirements. It can be configured multiple ways depending on what the client's end use would be of the data that we're collecting. So eventually, hopefully the mouse will move. There we go. So here you have just different, um, again, drop downs of, of what you can do and, and what you can turn on and off. You can also set different extent. If I'm a customer and I'm looking at a certain geographic area, uh, I can actually have it when I load Insight, actually look at a specific area. And then you can set different extents to kind of um, jump around your particular infrastructure. You can also set your own location. So you can actually, within this program, go ahead and define an asset or a particular item of interest and then work out detailed instru uh, instructions or directions to get a 
crew there immediately and, and dispatch work orders. So here in the upper left, we have just a look at the overall structure count, the number of spans in this data set. And again, this is vegetation management. So you have treetops and you can also, again, configure it in multiple different ways. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And as we zoom in, you'll start to see some of the imagery pop. Um, we're gonna be looking in the substation really quickly. See all these balloons are popping up and these are essentially um, different call outs for vegetation, either encroachments or something that the client may be interested in. So let's find a particular tower. We'll look at some imagery and some colorized point cloud data. So you really kind of thumb, uh, thumb through the data set here. We'll click on this tower. It'll bring up quickly on the left. You'll see some metadata flash. We'll click on the photo button and immediately, boom, uh, we have a, uh, an image here, an oblique image of this particular structure. So a couple of ways to go about once you've got this loaded, you can actually zoom in and look at kind of the level of detail that we're getting with the, uh, with the IXM 100 on this particular structure. Um, so again, the, the sharpness, I think, of these cameras is, is incredible especially considering the altitude and speeds that we're flying at. Here you can look at insulators and depending on what the use case is of the customer, uh, it might be a maintenance team and it, you know, it could be someone in engineering looking at these structures for a particular reason, uh, but it's really easy to move around and actually with the, with the sharpness uh, of the imagery and the detail, the level of resolution, uh, you can really get a lot of information uh, from this particular image. So now we'll look at the fun stuff. You can click on the 3D point cloud. Um, what it's going to do is it quickly will render uh, this particular structure. Um, what, I, what I still find really remarkable is not only has it loaded in this particular area of extent, uh, but as you'll see as I zoom out here, you can actually see um, it's, it's loaded last from the entire project area. So a uh, pretty remarkable tool um, to be able to do that so very quickly. Um, and anyway, I just thought that was that was that's really fun. So back in on this tower, um, and I'll show you some particular um, tools that you can use uh, within Insight um, to kind of gain more information on a particular area. So we'll click on this drop down, and we'll show some tools here. So in our little toolkit that we have configured here, we have a simple sort of point-to-point -point distance measurement in the point cloud. Uh, we can actually do area measurements as well, do volumetric assessments. And then if you needed to do some sort of a height profile, you can actually pull up different location to location, build out a profile that you can quickly save, uh, and again, make part of a work order. Uh, here are the different classification schemes for this particular project. All these can be quickly toggled on or toggled off, so you can kind of zoom in. There's a lot of information, uh, obviously, uh, embedded, so you can turn things on and off. Again, higher overview of layers, um, so you can kind of turn different on and off. You can see, turn the lighter off, turn it back on. Uh, very quickly and seamless. So um, that's just a quick tour. Um, and again, this is a this is something I think Quantum uh, Matt and his team have done an amazing job with. So if you need more information about uh, Insight in particular, uh, he'll be happy to uh, to work with you. Uh, to kind of recap uh, this project again, I've talked about the number of sensors, um, and, and, it, and it would be foolish of me not to mention uh, the amazing work done by uh, people. So we have a very large uh, field staff, uh, field professionals, both on the ground and in the air. For something like this, it had to occur uh, in a relatively short period of time with multiple assets, uh, multiple teams on the ground and in the air. Uh, it was a really well-managed and orchestrated um, from their end as well. So just wanted to kind of mention, mention the, the, the good people that have made this possible. Um, so wanted to talk about the end, the end here, which was kind of relative accuracy assessment. Um, nearly 10,000 flight lines over all these different scanners over a large geography, and we're talking over 500 billion individual points. And so um, to have that, that big of an orchestrated effort with all these sensors, um, all this technology, uh, and to come out of it with a highly accurate uh, relative accuracy of under uh, 30 centimeters is remarkable and just uh, kind of high praise uh, to the good people at Regal that have allowed us to do that. Uh, with their uh, technology. Uh, key takeaways. Uh, this is something I wanted to really end on. Um, I've been doing this job for about nine years now, um, and safety is, is a huge part uh, of what we do. And the performance of these particular systems from both Phase 1 and Regal 
uh, have allowed us to fly specifically for corridor work outside the wire environment, whereas a, a couple of years ago, uh, we were flying much lower, much slower to get the required density and resolution uh, for these corridors. But now, uh, thanks to Regal and Phase 1, we've actually been able to increase our altitude, increase our, increase our flight speed and reaction times that, that folks need to stay safe uh, when they're out there um, flying these missions. So um, overall performance as it's increased uh, has increased our safety margin, and I, and I really wanted to mention that today. Uh, reliability is another key one whether we are integrating new systems for the class or several other things that we've been working on, uh, having equipment um, from Regal and phase one show up at our doorstep, ready to integrate uh, and working as soon as we, as soon as we bolt it all together um, is really important. Um, and equally as important as when we wield it and utilize it in the field, uh, you know, we may not see it for months at a time. It could be deployed continuously over the course of the year. Uh, having reliable equipment from Regal and Phase One, uh, which we do have, is is a really important factor as well in, in us making decisions on on which equipment to integrate together. And then support on the support side, both uh, Regal and Phase One have done a great job and continue to do a great job at supporting this equipment. Uh, in the case we have issues from time to time, uh, their technicians and support systems are really second to none. Um, so with that, I will throw it back to Dana. Before I do, I'll just mention. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the things I've talked about, um, you can visit our Quantum website. You can also uh, email these two links directly, uh, and uh, there'll be someone to help you out. So uh, thanks for your time, and I'll pass it back to uh, Dana. Ryan, thank you so much. Wow, what a, a great way to end on the presenting side, how both Regal and Phase 1 cameras integrated together. Uh, create the type of deliverables for your specific client. Really love that. Um, so that now concludes the presentation side. I don't know if we have a minute or two for questions. Um, Paula, did you have anything that has come up that we can answer? Uh, there's, there's a couple of questions here. One is how often does the bore site alignment survey need to be done? Um, so that's a question I can answer. Um, when it comes to uh, the installation of the cameras, they're 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 designed to fit onto highly rigid platforms um, proximal to the IMU. So what we're really talking about is the uh, the misalignment angle stability between the camera and the IMU. Um, so that's very rigid. The, really, the only requirement to re um, uh, to reinvestigate the bore site is if you actually remove the camera from the mount. Um, or if you're in the process of perhaps uh, removing the camera to say swap a lens, uh, at that point the bore site would have to be revisited. Uh, but generally speaking, the bore site is quite stable. Um, however, we do of course recommend from a um, best practices perspective that for every major uh, program or project to um, to uh, redetermine the bore site to make sure those those uh, values are optimal for the project. Sorry, I was on mute. Can the pl flights be planned and executed with one software? Uh, so that's a good question. Um, so in the past, um, uh, the sensors have been traditionally delivered with the Planix's pause track solution. Uh, and yes, you can plan both the LiDAR and the imagery uh, on that, uh, on that uh, software platform. More recently, we've been uh, also looking at the Topo Flight and offering the Topo Flight uh, solution and the um, uh, you can also plan and um, and also uh, operate and control the, both the camera and the um, LiDAR sensors from their particular software. Uh, to do so, what Rego offers is an API for the RI Acquire software, which is then uh, integrated into the um, the onboard uh, navigation flight management software to allow us to provide sensor control and monitoring. So that's a uh, that's uh, uh, available for uh, any actual third-party flight management system designer as well. Thank you. Uh, one more question. Are there upgrade paths for the phase one cameras to the new 280 megapixel? I'll take that question. Uh, absolutely. Um, phase one always provides upgrade paths for existing phase one camera owners to new cameras that we release into the market. So yeah, please contact 
uh, on the industrial.phase1.com website, answer that question there or contact uh, through email. I think that's all the questions that we've got uh, that we can run through. I'll hand Perfect. back to you, Dana. Awesome. Thank you so much, Paula. Uh, we've run out of time anyway, so that the timing is perfect. Uh, Mike Sitar, thank you so much for your participation. And also, uh, Ryan Lynch, thank you so much for sharing how our, our products make your job easier. So thank you for that. And appreciate everybody that's attended this webinar. It will be available for recording uh, later. If you have any questions, please later, please feel free to contact each one of our groups and we'll be glad to respond to you. Everybody have a great day.